Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. This is the uh, fourth item of the four items that Walter from the Sura Brothers, my asphalt and paving guys, um, who gave me to fix to help decrease and discount the price of my job. So uh, I've already fixed his uh, Craftsman self-propelled lawnmower. I fixed his Husqvarna 125B and his home light weed whacker and this is the fourth one of course you leave the toughest one for last why do I say the toughest one well look at it it looks like it's been through hell and sat outside for a number of years this model normally is rear self propelled but as you can see there's no handle <clears throat> And there's the hole where the drive cable would have gone into. And as you can see, it's probably the cleanest uh, part of the whole thing, you know. So this one didn't have the self-propelled in it. There is no axle or transmission. So this, uh, while it was an option... This is not one of those. So why do I say it's uh, going to be difficult? Just a push them all, right? Just got the engine running and it's good to go. Well, I saw that somebody messed with it, man. First of all, it's missing a screw from the recoil starter. And if I looked over here, you got a coat hanger thing that's holding the governor. Governor, eh? So I don't know what that's about. Um, I hope it's not messed with anymore because I don't want to fix somebody else's mess, you know, because you don't know what they did to it. <clears throat> I actually like this engine a lot. I have the same exact one at my mom's house. However, hers is rear self-propelled. It's really nice. Always starts on the first pull. Cuts good. Sorry, cuts well. So uh, I guess I'm going to first fix the recoil starter because if you don't if you can't, don't have a recoil starter, you can't test it, right? Um, I pulled this out all the way before. It only goes up to here, so I have to replace the entire line. Took off the two, not three, the two 10 millimeter bolts, nuts. No gas in here. It's dry. So I guess I don't have to worry about uh, draining the gas tank. Bone dry. Splash guard. Pretty easy to remove. Just the uh, three bolts. Good condition recoil starter, but it stops right there. So it's not long enough for you to have this routed to the handle. I suppose you could pull start it with it just hanging like that, or attach a rope to this. But if you attach the rope to this, the knot will get caught in the loop on the handle, and when you're pulling it, it'll go, you know. So, we're going to replace this rope with one that's longer. I'm going to earl this with some WD-40. So somebody's definitely been in here because this is the spacer that goes in between there that holds this nice and snugly. Well, two of them are missing. So I only have one that goes like that. So it keeps it, this thing from moving around like that, you know? So how am I going to find another two of these? You know what I mean? I don't exactly have these in stock. You know what I mean? 
I mean, I suppose I could get a fuel line, the rubber fuel line. It's about that diameter. And just slip it through there, cut a couple pieces, and just, you know, at least that'll take up the slack, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? It's not complete. It's missing parts. How are you going to fix something where it's missing parts, you know? This part right here, where the inner coil is held on to the recoil starter, get some lubricant. Spray some WD-40 in there. Except I have to pump some more air into here. So I'm just going to pull this all the way out to the end, some side cutters, and I'm going to cut it right here where the knot is, pull it out, take another one, this is a longer one, it's not new, but it's strong. Fish it through the hole. Ooh, look at that. First shot. Can't let go of this thing because uh, I've got to make a knot. I'll just hold it by hand. Let it suck it in. Ooh, that's pretty short. Actually, that might be alright. I'll try it. I'm not going to make a tight knot, I'm just going to make a little small knot here so it doesn't suck all the way in, you know? And uh, while I have this off, I'm going to remove this. Let's see how that works. Works as it should. Check out the problem. And that looks like it works as it should. I bet you it wasn't running right, so they concocted this thing to just let it run, you know, through the governor. I bet you the carburetor is dirty. It's not terrible. It's not good. Not terribly. Seen worse. And I know you all have seen worse. You could tell that one time Earl got in there. If you hold it up to the light, you see through it, it's good. Good enough is what I'm saying. So you know what? I'm just going to get a 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, wrench. You take the nut off, just pull the bolt down just to see the condition. If it's completely terrible, then we have to do a carb clean and remove that whole assembly. On the Kohlers, they're like the Hondas. Pain in the ass to take it apart. So that's why I want to try to save myself some time by just looking at the condition of the bowl. If the bowl looks clean, relatively clean, we'll do a quick and dirty. 10 millimeter wrench. Why it's 10 millimeter? Because Kohler copied Honda. That's 
it's really tight, which is a bad sign. Because if it's really tight, it means that inside the bowl is dry, rusty, corroded, and doesn't seem like it's been run for a long time. See? It's a bunch of, bunch of half turns and it's still hard to turn. It's a bad sign. Got a feeling I'm gonna have to take all this stuff apart. I don't expect any moisture or gas or anything. Yeah, just tell. Look at that. Dry like a desert. It's actually not that dirty. See? This gasket is dunsky. I can't see a damn thing, man. I have a feeling that I took this part anyway. Let's take it apart. Of course, I. Ten millimeter. the hose. Another one of these spacer things goes right here. Yep, difficult. I used to take this part off, the muffler. That's only one, two, two bolts, right? But then another person told me that there's another way to do it. How are you gonna get by this thing? Right? Yeah, it's this part here that's difficult to get off. So you have to take that off. It's the Honda's where you have to take off a bolt here to get it off. This one, you almost have to take off the muffler, the, the thermo, thermostat part off the muffler. What are you gonna do? Gotta take it off. Gotta make sure you guys can see. Hey! Gotta take the uh, fuel line off. Hose clamp for the fuel line.
dry as a desert. Rotate it upwards. Slide it out. Check this out. Right, so this part here, you've got to bend this like that to get it over that hump. Then hooks from underneath a little. Stay there. Don't move. Now we're gonna flip this upside down. You know, it's not bad. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Look. Got a hose that goes back into it again. Why don't they just make that internally? You know what I mean? But uh, this is actually not bad. No, I'm going to lose that. Actually, that's not bad. Good float. Looks like a good needle. I gotta clean it up. There's still there's some stuff on that needle, you know. Some looks like um, you know, like snowflakes. I'm looking at the seat. Seems to be clear. I'm looking at the main jet in the emulsion area. It looks good. But guess what? It's removable. You know what that means. If it's removable, I gotta remove it. I don't wanna remove it. Because if I try to remove that sometimes, I break it, I strip it, but I'm gonna remove it. First thing I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm gonna try to help myself out any which way I can. I'm gonna spray some penetrating Earl in there to loosen it up from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Got a carburetor screwdriver. I say it's a carburetor screwdriver because if you look at the tip, it's super flat and sharp. Okay, here we go. Now remember, this is how I went zzz, right in there. How am I going to avoid that, though? You know? I guess it's not an impact, so... And don't think... Will I try the impact on this? I might. <gasps> oh my god, it moved. I never have luck with this. It's moving. You know how this is. It, it like loosens, right? But then it has to go through another set of threads. So it's like free spinning right now, but not with no threads. And you have to get it to the second part of it. Oh, sons of bitches. How did that go? Hey, I'm lucky this came out at all. You know what I mean? This is uh, actually not blocked. I can see light through it. Here's the main jet. And uh goes top this way. Looks pretty clean. Pretty surprised, actually. Multi-purpose parts cleaner and degreaser from my friends at Lucas Oil Products. This uh, does not leave any residue and it doesn't blow up gaskets like carb cleaner does. Ooh, cold. Look at all those jets. Blow out this 
jet nut. Ooh, nice. Nice. Torch tip cleaners. That's too thick. Damn, that's this is the thinnest one. Sticking it up the fuel input area. Ooh, cold. Up the emulsion. There's no f um, Welsh plug in this one. I'm going to blow it in here. That's right, I'm dripping it all over the engine, so what? It's pretty clean. Throttle plate. clean. See this part here where the gasket is? It's dirty. I'm going to take a wire brush and clean all this stuff. clean. Now the tunnel where the fuel goes through. Take this torch tip cleaner with a brush on it, with the bristles. Go in. Go in. There we go. Good. Now I have to find a um, gasket, which I don't have, you know what I mean? But it looks similar to the Tecumseh ones that are very thin. Here's a Tecumseh one, brand new. It's thin like, the, like that one, whatever it is. I don't know where it is. going to be a pain. Got to stretch it out, fellas. Got to stretch it out. Damn it. Mm. 
I'm gonna work on it. Got that bad boy on. Looks good. And this part here that goes on there, see it's flat. So this is gonna work just fine. Just hope it doesn't pop off while I'm cleaning this bowl. This was the gasket before. Dry, brittle, cracked, broken. Dunsky. I'm going to clean that right now. Got my finger covering the hole. Getting a toothbrush. Doesn't have to be completely spotless, but you just want to make sure that the fuel doesn't uh, disintegrate the stuff that's on the bottom and have it floating around, you know. You just don't want any debris in there. At least debris that's big enough to clog a hole, which is pretty much any piece of dust or something like that. And then to have a nice clean seal, you want to get these parts too. So I'm going to get like a wire bristle brush clean that It may not look great, but as long as stuff doesn't keep coming off of that, it's good. Because this is like a cone-shaped um, float bowl, you can't stick anything in there. Like if it's flat like a Tecumseh or a uh, Briggs, you just take a wire wheel thing and you put it in your drill and go and clean all that out. But uh, you'd need a really small one to get in there, you know, which I don't. I don't have. See the jet nut gasket is uh, still on there. It's actually not on there right, but should I move it? See, if I move it, I take a chance of ripping it. It's pretty important. As long as it's not in the way of the hole, I guess it's alright. I'm just going to leave it. This uh, nut over here is to drain. Like if you're like anybody actually does that, you know, they should. But if you're storing this for the winter, you want to drain all the fuel out of your carburetor, take this nut off. You know, if you're going to take the nut off, you might as well take this nut off and have it drain from the bottom on the side, right? Duh. Anyway, so, uh, oh, the needle. Muy, muy importante, el nido. Where's the needle? Oh, so here's the bowl. Ah, uh, the float, sorry. And the needle is spring-loaded in there. I don't even want to take it out now because it's spring-loaded. Yeah, I'm not going to take it out. I'm just going to clean it from here. Ah, Henry, what's that going to do? Does a lot. Whatever was on there is now not going to be on there. Yeah, it's still dirty. Does it look dirty to you? It's just got to be smooth, that's all.
That's good. goes like that. This thing is pointed forward, so this will be pointed towards there. Should work. Wait, how did that go again? So it goes like that. Yep, okay, so that's like this. Oh no! Yep, gasket popped off. Something of a bitch. Stupid thing on now. I'm just gonna pop it on real quick. Ooh, I think I got it. I think the carburetor is pretty clean. Okay, now little wire on this throttle thing here from the bottom. This one here goes in there, pops in, rotates. Slide this through the two studs. Thermostat on the muffler, bolt on here, bolt in there. How am I going to get my finger in there? All right. Tighten these down. Okay. Uh, fuel line. Here. Right, look at the multitasking. Turning a screw with my left hand, attaching the hose on the other, tightening the hose clamp while I'm turning this. Multitasking. I don't know why I'm in a rush. I'm going to tighten those two out uh, on. So I tightened that down 
Now I'm going to address these things. Spacers for this, right? So I, I found another one. So I have two, okay? One, two. I need three. I don't have the third, okay? I don't have any of these. This is about the same diameter as an old fuel hose. And this fits on there. Question is, does it fit in here? It doesn't. It's too wide. I'm going to find another hose. So, I just got a call from the uh, local uh, auto shop here. I took my van in because I had a leak in my brake line. I had no brakes for a while. I need my van, you know? So I didn't want to mess with brakes. I mean, I do do brake pads and rotors and stuff, but I've never done brake lines. You know, uh, the bleeding and stuff, I just never did it before, so I'll, I'm a little out of my element when it comes to that. So I took it in. I got a whole brake line from the front, master cylinder, all the way to the right rear, uh, left rear. It's all rotted out. It's going to cost me like 300 bucks. Trigger! What are you gonna do? You just gotta do it. Anyway, so this hose fits through there. See? So I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna cut this perfectly perpendicular. Y'all know what perpendicular means. And it's the right diameter. See? Fits there perfectly. And I'm just going to cut the same length as this spacer, give or take a few hundredths of a millimeter. It's not the space shuttle. It's just a spacer. Hey, space shuttle, spacer. Boom! Dunsky! Hey! Come on, man. It's just a lawnmower. Not go crazy, man. Whatever works, you know? Tight. Tight. Oh, you know what? I might as well put these, uh, these bolts on. Did this go on first, or did that go on first? See, I don't even remember. Got a gasket here. I believe this went on. I believe this went on like that, right? Did that go on like that? Two, two nuts that hold the uh, carburetor. Let me get you closer. Jesus. So, uh, I do a little betting online with sports. I just got a call from my account manager for BetUS. It's an online betting thing. I stopped betting with them because it was so hard to leave a deposit from your credit card because you get all these fraud warnings, whatever. Man, I, I, I don't know why I pick up the phone, seriously. Had me on the line for like 20 minutes. Wasted my time. Anyway, got a free bet out of it. <laughs> Cowboys, 49ers, this Saturday. Cowboys have the first punt. I win 50 bucks. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I just put this bracket on, tightened the bolts while the guy was talking to me. While the guy was talking to me, I'm going to put this on now. I remember how to do this damn thing. I don't uh, do too many colors, but I like them. They're easy to work on. This uh, cowling is, see, look at that. Yeah, it works perfectly. This cowling is very similar to um, what am I trying to say here? very similar to the uh, 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 Predator engines. Here's going to be a challenge because it was missing the uh, nut. It was missing a nut for this and so um, I got a 3 8 I know a 3 8 is not going to fit, and I'm just going to force it on there, you know, because I don't have any 10 millimeter ones, you know, just lying around, nuts, you know. So it's really easy to remove the, the top, I will say. Really easy. 
This is the one that I, I think is a 3 8 and not a 10 millimeter. So I'm just going to force it on there. What are you going to do? I don't have one. This is actually 10 millimeter because it fits. What do you guys think? think, think, this thing, uh, you think this thing will start or what? I don't think it will. Something is majorly wrong with this one, okay? I just have a feeling. Carburetor wasn't all that dirty. Don't tell me it's just a recoil starter and a carb cream. Don't tell me that. It can't be that easy. This one, I just feel like it's going to be a pain. Right, I can't find a thing for that, so I'm going to have to force it on somehow. So that's what I did. I forced it on, and it's on. Got a handle. Got a lot of these handles from China. I never used the rope because it's uh, too short. It's good for like generators and stuff, but that's it. Look, there's a sock here. I got a free sock. How about that? I got a free sock. Not this. I sure hope this rope is long enough. Stick it through this new handle. I just ordered uh, 10 more new handles from China. Not China, China. And uh, it was cheap. 10 handles for three bucks. But it'll take a month to get here. That's okay. I'd rather order super cheap and have it for the future. Because if you're ordering bulk, that's what you want to do. You know what I mean? Burn. See? Eh? Huh? Eh? boys have you been any words that's it I'm gonna put some gasogen and put some gasogen we'll do a gas again can't find a gas where's the gas oh. I've got to look for a gas That ought to be all right, at least to start. What do you guys think? Will it work? Gas should be trickling through the fuel lines now into the carburetor. Put your hand underneath to see if you got leaks, and you do. I have leaks. I have leaks. I've got leaks. And it looks like it's from that uh, bowl gasket, you know, the nut. Pretty decent one too. You know what? I'm gonna try to fire it up. Black, thick, 
picked up the ad line. And a little past the ad line. It's good. Good for now. I gotta I gotta fix this uh leak. So it's leaking pretty good, and I don't think it's coming out of the gasket, uh, the bowl gasket. It's just coming out the, the nut gasket right there. I feel it. So I'm going to uh, clamp off the fuel. Let me see that. There we go. Clamping off the fuel. And I knew that gasket was going to be a problem. Because it was off-centered, you know? You know what I mean? And remember, I negated to clean the nut too, remember? Because I had my finger on the bowl gasket, and I didn't want to take my finger off, and I didn't clean the nut. Oh shit, as a matter of fact, I have the same problem right now. I can't let the, uh, I can't let the bowl go down because I'll never get that gasket back on again. You know what I mean? And here it is. Look. It actually feels pretty good. I don't know why it's leaking. It's not busted or nothing. The finger is still on here because I don't want to let go of the bowl. The minute I let go of the bowl, the bowl gasket will pop off. Then I'd have to take the whole thing apart again. You know what I mean? Man, I don't know if this is going to work. I want to like, I want to like clean this nut, but I can't take my hand off of that. <laughs> what a dilemma. Ooh. Got that in the groove now. Now it should work. I say again, should. Before that uh, nut gasket was off-centered and it wasn't in the groove. The nut actually has a groove on it, you know? Still, it shouldn't have leaked. And it's rubber. And the nut was on there really tight, too. That's on tight. It's so tight that I might have even stripped it. I'm going to release this clamp. Let's see if it leaks. Yeah, baby. dry. Me maneuvering that gasket worked. It's in the groove of the nut. It's on tight. There's no leaks coming from the bowl gasket or the nut gasket. So we're good to go. And as you guys saw, 
we started that baby up. So, no leaks. Cleaned out this uh, air filter a little bit. Remember guys, I'm just getting this running. I'm not servicing it. But Walter, I suggest in the future you get yourself an oil change and new air filter. Other than that, put gas in it. This baby starts. I'm going to rinse it off a little bit. This is a little high. I like setting the baby better. Not that this is even mine. Setting number two is better. See if it starts up. So, I have finally finished. I have gotten four of Walter's machines running and working. This one took just as long as, uh, this one didn't take as long as the Craftsman, but it was a pain though, huh? It's a lot of work. But uh, we fixed the recoil starter, added a handle, cleaned the carb, and uh, that's it. This thing runs great. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. There you go. Hey, Walter, see? I even went and rinsed it off for you, man. It was like mud everywhere, man. I don't know what you did with this thing. I just rinsed it off for you, man. This is a nice mower, bro. I've always liked this one. See you guys later. So getting back to the uh, home light, uh, UT246-20046. Twenty-five cc uh, weed whacker belonging to Walter. Um, you guys remember how the two gas lines were like this thick tubing that they um, somebody siliconed it on the top and on the bottom. I just couldn't stand it, so I put some regular fuel lines in, and somebody had drilled two holes to accommodate the thicker tubes. So I took those tubes and I just stuck the new fuel lines through the tube so it wouldn't leak around the, uh, the grommet area. So I basically just made grommets. Still doesn't have a fuel filter in it. So when I was running it for a little while, it just stopped and it wouldn't prime anymore. <clears throat> then after priming so much, the primer bulb had a crack in it. So I changed the primer bulb to a new primer bulb. And then it wouldn't suck any fuel in. So I'm thinking to myself, silicone must have gotten into the fuel tank. So I rinsed it out and this big blob big blob of silicone was inside. <laughs> These things here, you ready? These things were in the, the, the lines and I had to take this off and there was like debris of silicone in between there so it wasn't getting any fuel. So I cleaned that all out, changed the fuel lines, made grommets and I ordered a fuel filter. I ordered a bunch actually because it was super cheap and uh, now it runs like a champ. I used my uh, adjustment uh, fuel mixture adjustment tool. Got it going just perfect. Figure now I'll try it. <laughs> 
New York Weed Whacker Massacre. You know, I don't like straight shafts. Everybody, all the landscapers tell me the straight shafts are better. I don't like straight shafts. It's kind of hard to uh, edge, you know what I mean? Anyway, I feel much better now that uh changed the fuel lines. This thing's ready to go, man. I mean, works really well for a home light, you know what I'm saying? All right, nice. Anyway, so I've got all uh, four of uh, Walter's things fixed up, ready to go for my next project. That's right. Head gasket on my tractor. Been working on this for a while. Gonna get it done today. Hopefully we'll ride this baby around. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Also follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on the next one. Have a great day. Hey guys, Boba and I want to thank you for all the support of mowers and blowers. If you'd like, make a short video clip like these, and I'll put it as an outro in my future videos. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.